SASAC program director, let me acknowledge. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, former President Tabon uh, Begi, also acknowledge the panelists. Uh, our guest was just left us, but she said her flight was leaving. To acknowledge Rapelang, I was very proud to see our young uh, scholars and academics. I was really encouraged. Acknowledge Kim Matambile, Patisis, and all members of the working group, the distinguished guests that are here, and ladies and gentlemen. President, let me really express my most sincere gratitude and appreciation for the invitation, and more important, for the work that you've led that will definitely benefit us as a sector and as a country. And for that, I want to thank you most sincerely. And I want to take this opportunity also to value and applaud the foundation and its partners for taking a road less traveled to interrogate the threats and opportunities for a basic, a basic education system in the context of the fourth industrial revolution. And really want to thank most sincerely the approach that has been used because working government sometimes can be quite difficult. Uh, and we all agree that collaboration is very important. But the approach of starting the process with us, we find ourselves half the time, President, corporate coming with very great ideas and you hear about them and are not able to integrate and factor them in the work that you do. And the importance of working collaboratively with government is to also use the lessons that come from those experiments to inform what happens in the bigger system. And that's very important for us to make sure that we work closely, we have a sense of the, the opportunities, the threats, the successes of any other pilot that is done to benefit the sector. So sometimes we lose out a lot because some of these initiatives happen somewhere there and we hear about them there and they're not able to inform the bigger system. For instance, the program that we are leading president is going to be working with 50 schools. We run more than 25,000 schools. It's going to benefit a million kids. We have more than 12.5 million kids in the system and our duty as governments to serve all of them. So the lessons that we get from this one million helps us a lot as a system of this magnitude to inform the work that we do to serve all the other children. But if you work with the million kids, it's a million kids, so almost 12, 12 million of them are losing out. So it's very important to make sure that we work close, and it also helps us that as we expand and as we grow, we have piloted because with such a big system, we don't want to make mistakes. And if there's been some front runner like the foundation has done, then we are able to inform the other 12 million or 25,000 schools with the information and the experience that has been gained from them. So it's very valuable to really structure sometimes the relationships the way you've done, so it's quite clear that, and sometimes partners just feel that, no, you want to bully them, but having been at least a president, you know that, uh, that that's the best way out, and I'm really grateful that uh, you've approached it that way. Uh, so for us, it's not a luxury to work with yourselves, but it's a huge privilege, an opportunity to have a partner who starts off the process with us. And I'm also glad that we're working with UNISA, because also in our work, to deal with the fourth industrial revolution. We're working with units, because of their footprint, uh, they're able to, we are using their labs to experiment with the 100 schools that we're starting off. So again, the partnership with UNISA is very valuable because of the footprint and also the work that we've started with them. And the foundation did so as a non-state interest group. This is vital, as I say, for the health of our democracy because policy will benefit in our country will register faster progress when there's unity of purpose. And as a country, we do need to reignite the culture of intellectual engagements 
and rational public discourse as it were, and the best must refuel the passion for intellectual engagement. And again, this I found very helpful in that sense that uh, sometimes I say as schools we, and, and I'm glad that there was an acknowledgement that it's a very complicated system, so we have to, we have to be talking about toilets, how many kids, and you have to be talking about food, I have to be, and to really have a body that helps to deal in a very soberly manner with intellectual engagement is also enriching to the sector, and for that we appreciate greatly. So, President and your team, we welcome the working group's report. And I've already complained to the president. Benzo, I found that I'm printing my new print. I almost took it from the president, so that I am my president printing. But I really am looking forward to the report. And quite clearly, you had put together a good team of educators. As the teacher said, we do believe that uh, at the end of the day, half the time they know better than us, perhaps, uh, and they're the very people. The, the system is just on the shoulders of teachers. And uh, any success depends on us being able to be at the same power with them. Also, partnerships with academics is very important and very uh, 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 it's very important and very helpful for us as the system to work with civil society, with business, with policy makers and thought leaders is always invaluable. And all these preeminent citizens and friends of South Africa were pre preoccupied with the urgent task to make our country a better place to live, work, learn and play. As you say, the idea is to tackle the complex question of what practical steps South Africa needs to take in order to lay the foundation for a successful transition to this new epo epoch, which is characterized by digital and emerging technologies. And like your panel chairperson, I'm, very, I'm an optimist. I just have a feel that with technologies, we are just bound, we're, we're readying ourselves for this leapfrog. And I have no doubt that uh, our fortunes are going to change with the fourth industrial revolution. <laughs> I believe that these digital disruptions and emerging technologies means we have to prepare our young people for careers that are yet to be recognized as professions. I'm struggling with them, but it requires a new set of skills that the old hadn't even imagined yet. This then calls for the radical shift in the social economic planning, including an overhaul of our teacher training and curriculum development programs. The group's report and its findings, I believe sets a new path of knowledge and most importantly, of implementing strategies. My pages are getting mixed, uh, President. I, I once studied a Teflop when we addressed bomb paper and his papers got mixed and he couldn't work out to put <laughs> so we were the only ones who could make out to say he gone into a wrong and say Gilly after. <laughs> right. So I said the working group's report and its findings set us on a path to new ideas, knowledge, and most importantly, of implementing strategies. It ignites a rational-based conversation in our country about a subject as emotive as basic education, but as important as it is. As a minister of education, I have a, a really rare privilege. Each time people ask me, aren't you daunted by the task? I said, no, South Africans love education and are always engaging. When I go to the shops, even the gentleman who helps me with the trolley is also advising me as I go. That's how <laughs> to say, Minister, I could be doing that for you. So that's really the power and the beauty of the sector that we found ourselves. And we believe that this report will go a long way in enhancing our evidence-based policy making and action. We have begun our baby steps to integrate emerging technologies in our basic education system. That's why I highly appreciate also the support that we'll be getting, uh, we'll be getting from yourselves. Because we have begun our, prog our programs, 
we're piloting, and it's very helpful to also hear other voices which also work at the level that we've worked. At a global level, we're doing so through three-pronged approach, which consists of the revision of our school curriculum design, including, amongst others, re-looking at our learning methodology in the foundation phase, the provision of IT resources at schools, including connectivity and devices through Operation Paikitsa, and the integration of technology in teaching and learning through these programs. And that's why I say the information, the even the context that you, you, the forum that you have created will provide a very helpful sounding uh, 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 word for us to also test our ideas. And critical for us as the government is the integration of ICTs into all levels of education and training system in order to improve the quality of teaching and learning. All stakeholders are requested to align and deliver a consistent ICT solution to all schools to ensure that no school is left behind because of its geographical location and its economic profile. And that's why the partner is very helpful because you are already a pathfinder and experiences that you gain from the inform the broader system then then benefits everybody else where you would not have reached a, a also as a system. But it helps us also not to go into a risky environment and put the entire system uh, at risk and we can experiment with the entire system. It's a huge system and therefore we do need pilots like this to be able to guide the, 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 the rollout of the program. As one of the speakers has indicated for a very strange or even exciting uh, uh, fact in our country, South Africans still believe in the public education system. 96% of South African children go to public schools. It's only 5% that goes to private schools. We have 12.5 million learners, and private schools serve only 500, uh, around 500,000 learners. So to invest in the public education systems, to really invest in the children of the nation. And that's why it's very critical and very important to make sure that all of us as South Africans support public education, because that's where the children of the nation are. So we're very excited, President, through your foundation and Pro, Pro Future in pursuing a project to leverage technology in order to close the, edu the education digital gap. As we know, it is proven beyond doubt that digital technology can ensure access to quality education for everyone anywhere in the world and also anywhere in our country. Where we had, for instance, provided interactive workbooks in deep rural areas, those kids move even faster and better than children who are in small classes, urban area, well-resourced classes. Half of them, I went to the Eastern Cape, they finished what we were supposed to teach them for 12 months by, when I visited them now in July, that finished the curriculum, so we able to enrich and be able to close the deficits that they would have brought to the grid. So it's, for us, it's a big game changer. So as you are aware that we are working at full speed to ensure that within the next six years, all our workbooks and textbooks are delivered through a tablet, as announced by the president. I'm also delighted to inform you that once our priorities for the next five years includes the immediate implementation of a curriculum focusing on skills and competencies of a changing world. What it is, this is our Vangan, because <laughs> we just know that it has to happen. And that's why we are researching, it has to happen. And hence, these uh, young stadiums you have brought, the president will help us to say what it is. Ask me, and the ask now, but I know it has to happen. <laughs> so this addition to the curriculum takes into account the disruptions that are going to be brought by the fourth industrial revolution as well as the introduction of entrepreneurship, schools of specialization, and focus schools. We have begun the process of transforming our curriculum by introducing new and exciting subjects such as coding and robotics. And as I said, UNICEF is one of our biggest partners in this endeavor, and we are using 
there are science labs throughout the country in schools where we are piloting. And our plan includes the introduction of, ten, of other 10 types of focus schools incrementally through, throughout the country in the mid, medium and long term to offer these new subjects and other skills base. We can mention a, f a few that interestingly, we also intend to establish a high-tech IT coding and robotic school, arts, maths, and science, and that's where, again, the teacher training and teacher development becomes critical. We can put them on curriculum, we can speak about them, unless we have been able to develop teachers to provide these skills, it's meaningless. We've done lots of work around schools for aviation, we've developed the curriculum, we're working with our qualifications authorities to qualify the subjects that have been done. Some of our schools have started teaching maritime studies. Engineering, for instance, we, are, we have started with schools of technical high schools in engineering. Again, it's around teacher development, around hospitality and tourism, schools of skills and commercial schools. So we really want to thank you most sincerely for working with us. And without ceasing to ensure that the age of hope so eloquently <coughs> expounded by our former president, so I'm speaking to the young people, President Ugu and Diti Abak, uh, that we really are very thankful for really working with us so that this age of hope that you've always preached doesn't become an age of despair. We thank you for your, commit, for your continued faith in the South African government and its people your thought, leadership, and investment will ensure that our new dawn doesn't become a false dawn. We continue to help to, 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 to appeal to South Africans and also the academics to help us build and renew our country and our dreams. We are convinced that through working together in a lifetime, we shall indeed achieve what we had envisaged in 1994, a country where everyone reaches their full potential and fulfill their dreams. So in conclusion, again, President, on behalf of the Department of Education, I want to extend a heartful sense of appreciation and congratulation to you, for President, on your working team and friends for having produced this document and this process. And we're looking forward to a strengthened partnership. And we are committed to making sure that we do our part to make sure that the recommendations of the report do filter and inform the entire system and, and really benefit the 96% of children who are in our hands. And fortunately, even private schools have got very good collaboration with them. So it will really be to the advantage of all the children of the country because we work very well with them. So whatever we do, we, count, we check with them, we work with them, and we co collaborate with all the schools because at the end of the day, wherever they are, they remain South African children, and their success is the success for all of, all of us. So thank you very much, President, and thanks for the team.